bitches. Like, what's really the fuck is going on? Jealous ass, ass mad ass, whack, sad ass, bad body ass, nasty looking ass bitches. Like, what's really the fuck is going on? Jealous ass, ass mad ass, whack, sad ass, bad body ass, nasty looking ass bitches. Like, what's really the fuck is going yeah, JT, like, what's really good? Yeah, like, Nicki Minaj, what's really good? Like, so y'all opt up, linked up, like, some dirty-ass, dingy Cuban links, old and dusty, pussy hand-me-down, that's for JT, because she's still ass all day. Like, pussy knocking on every door, a hand-me-down-ass pussy, pussy hand-me-down, hand it down to everyone down the block the industry whomever the highest bidder is what's really good why would all the hate you know why are we doing the bootleg carisha please you like literally i saw this video and i was recording about it yesterday but i left it alone but this video that i just uploaded is definitely a part two to what i was saying in my most recent video it's like it's jealousy it's sad that you know, you have a quote-unquote best friend who was never really a friend because for her to be jealous of you, and it's not even about the envy because people sometimes tend to envy and be jealous. We all have that tendency. Kelly Rowland was just like envious of Beyonce, but it's all about how you go about it. If you sit up there and you admit it, that's beautiful. You you real. And then you can say, okay, well, I'm envious of this and that and the third because my friend is this and that and the third. But I love my friend, like Kelly Rowland said, and I'm happy for her, but I just feel like I'm not in a good space. And I'm just going to be happy for my friend, though. It's not her fault. I'm happy she's winning. That's how Kelly was feeling. Like, that. that's envy, like, you know, that it's not harmful. Like, you're not trying to harm her, you know, uh, sabotage anyone's career. It's like just a regular emotion that people feel because we're not perfect. Like, we feel that way sometimes. But this type of envy that Nikki has for Cardi is destructive. Um, she does, She's done so many things to try to discredit Cardi and um we all know that and now it's like the writing thing um it basically proved JT herself you know proved that Nicki Minaj is a hater you know like it's okay for you to write bars for JT but it's not okay for it's okay for y'all to collaborate and write together but it's not okay for Cardi to collaborate and um write her own music and then some music she collaborates with other writers and they make a beautiful piece of art so it's like you know it's really a double standard it is piggybacking off of my recent videos and um the fact that in this video right here it's just basically explaining what trina's basically saying what jt and Nicki minaj is going through they're jealous they're miserable you know they're both in relationships that are messed up um, they're not happy with themselves within one is like near death. The other one, their vagina is near a clinic. Um, and it's like, they're upset because of their life. And just because someone's famous does not mean they're not miserable. They're miserable. And it's a shame that, and, and, and what I was going back to saying about envy, Kelly, the envy she had, she loved Beyonce. She didn't want to harm Beyonce. She just felt like her position was messed up. And she basically was looking at Beyonce like, damn, I'm in a messed up position. But she was not, but she was happy for Beyonce. The envy that JT and, and, and Nicki Minaj has is a different type of envy. That type of envy is destructive. That's the type of envy where you, where you try to destroy the person or put them down or take them down because of your jealousy and envy. Now, see, that right there is evil because you're trying to affect someone. Kelly never was trying to affect, you know, um, Beyonce's success. She just felt bad about her own lack of success at that time, she felt, you know? So people, we all, like I said, all of us have, um, sometimes can get jealous or envious, but it's all about how you move. And they're destructive. They really evil envy. Like, they envy, like, in a in a way where they want you to lose, Kelly didn't want Beyonce to lose. That's the difference. There's there's different types of envies. Like there's two it's two different types of ways to handle the situation. That's why Kelly and Beyonce are best friends to this day because Kelly loved Beyonce and was happy for her. It was just that her situation was crazy, abusive relationship, career not going how she want. Damn, Beyonce is doing really good. I envy that. But JT and Cardi B, I'm sorry, JT and Nicki Minaj, they're like, I want to take her down. I don't want her to be on top. I want to diss her. I want to discredit her. That's destructive and that's sad. And and then JT further is hating on her own best friend. And it shows because why are you interviewing Nicki Minaj like you, Carisha, please? You already 
went and betrayed her on Queen Mix working with Nicki Minaj alone. And then now you popping shots at her in no bars saying that she's being, she's playing wife to Diddy when Diddy don't mess with her like that. We all know Diddy got females, but you're her best friend. Why would you do that? And then now it's like the magazine thing. I got a clip. I got, I read a little bit of part of it where she was admitting that, you know, Nikki wrote bars for her. So I established that already established their haters and double standard. They have a double standard, but it really opened up my eyes when I got the full article. I said, wait a minute, this is JT interviewing Nicki Minaj for this magazine. So she's basically trying to take on the role of Carisha, please. And that right there proves my point when I said, I think that JT and Miami have something going on and they do. Okay. JT is very, very jealous of Carisha. And if, when you go on Twitter, let me see. Um, um, let me see something real quick. <sighs> okay. Young Miami. people young miami whoa whoa all right young miami young miami made a tweet and the tweet basically it made me think of jt and um By the way, friends don't run to the internet and genuinely tweet about the situation y'all just went through. You see? By the way, friends don't run to the internet and generally tweet about the situation y'all just went through. Okay. Okay. She put... Okay, my phone on life support, but I love her so much. We've been through everything together. I don't want to switch her out or get another one. It's something about this phone. That's for JT. She used, she's a smart girl. She's not stupid. That's basically her trying to say, really, that's this for JT, but she used the phone as, um, you know, the prop. JT's the phone. Basically, she's basically saying, my phone, her friendship with JT basically is on life support. But she loves JT so much. They've been through everything together. She does not want to switch her out. She don't want to, like, you know, replace JT with another friend. She don't want to get rid of JT. She don't want another JT because it's something about JT. Because she loves JT. Carisha loves JT. And that that's her best friend from Miami. They've been through everything together. But their friendship is on life support. And that's why I say you got to be really smart when it comes to, like, when people talk. People use metaphors, people wordplay to tell you how they feel. People hide behind certain things to tell you how they really feel. This right here is not about a phone. This is about a friendship. Her friendship is on life support. Who the hell writes this like a who the hell writes about this? Who the hell who writes a paragraph like this about Verizon Wireless? I'm not talking about Verizon Wireless when I say my phone is on life support. I'm not doing it, okay? This right here is deep. My phone on life support, but I love her so much. We've been through everything together. She's talking about a friendship. I don't want to switch her out or get another one. It's something about this phone. Like, it's something about JT. She wants JT to be her friend forever, but the way JT is moving, it's going to make her feel like I got to leave. I got to switch up. I got to switch, not switch up, but I got to get rid of her because she's not good for me, my friendship, my mental health, like it's heartbreaking. It is like that's traumatizing when you real when you have this this happened to me. I would I was I thought I found the love of my life when it came to a friend. Like I had a friend that I loved so much, but she was envious of me because I graduated college and she had dropped out. So she was envious of me and she would do shit like JT, like do things to sabotage me, do things to try to bring me down, do things, you know, to try to like, you know, um, challenge me. Like she would do 
phony, messed up things. And I had to switch her out. I had to let her go. And that traumatized the fuck out of me. Because when you genuinely love someone, it's like heartbreaks aren't just boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife. A friend can break your heart too. A best friend can can fuck your mind up and your heart up too. A, A best friend can really break your heart. My heart was broken, bitch. I was in therapy not just for not like solely for her but i was in therapy in general but she came up that's how uh, that's how much the 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 separation of us impacted me it hurt my feelings so much i needed to talk to my therapist about it i was like oh my god like it had a very bad effect on me because she was envious i'm thinking you my dog you're supposed to be happy for me and turns out you're not a friend you're not a true friend so i gotta let you go and you act, you moving funny. So this is your real self. This is your character. And I can't be around you. And I really love you. But it's a shame that I can't be your friend because of your feelings, because of your cancerous ways. And that's traumatizing and that's heartbreaking. And people really like go ghost and just really like disappear for a while when they go through breakups. And that includes friendships. Because when you lose a friend you love, and then it's like not even to death, but you lose them because they are acting funny or moving stupid with you and you thought that that was your dog and you happy for them but they not happy for you and you see how they moving and they're doing things to try to disrespect you and sabotage you they throwing shade at you they doing all of this type of stuff it's like wow i thought we were, we was like two peas in a pod in miami like we was we did everything together but the thing is is that i said before let money and fame get into play and watch people how they change pay attention to people when they elevate in life, when they get money, when they get fame, pay attention to who they are and how they act because money and fame will show you true colors. Money and fame, if it changes someone, they was always fake. And if it doesn't change them, they solid. If money and fame gets to their head and they start switching up on day ones, they was always like that. They was just playing like, you know, a role. And that's heartbreaking to figure out like, damn, I thought you was my friend, but you really, really wasn't the girl that I thought you were. Like, you really, really are all for yourself. You don't really love me. We were just friends because we were into the same things and we ran the same. We we, we were all friends and good until I elevated. And we was all friends and happy and best friend city girls until I fucked around and got a billionaire. Until I got my own show. I'm elevating. We were friends and best friends and cool when we were on the same level. But I start elevating and you are envious of me. And it's like, okay, you're not even just like Kelly Rowland envy. You're like really like evil. Like I want to take you down envy. So like I said, success is the biggest, biggest test. When it comes to a relationship and friendships, like. How do your people act when you get successful? When you elevate in life, how do they act? And JT basically showed her true colors. Like, I'm off of myself. I want to do the Nicki Minaj remix because I think it's beneficial to me. Fuck you, Carisha. I'm going to go hang out with Nicki Minaj and, you know, I'm going to do an interview and compete with Carisha. Please, fuck you, Carisha. Like, money and fame really, really gets into people's heads. Like, people will do anything for money. And JT already, she even uses her vagina for money. So there's no type of loyalty to anybody she has but to herself. And to find that out later on in life, you realize, wow, you only fucked with me when we were on the same level. But now that I'm elevating and I'm dealing with a billionaire and you see my lifestyle and you see basically the upgrade of it and you see me get, doing my own show you basically switched up on me. That is traumatizing. Miami already lost her baby daddy. So for her to lose her best friend, baby, she's going to need a therapist. Because Miami, I could tell, like, she really loved JT. You know what I'm saying? Like, she really genuinely loves JT. And she's the one I feel like is the most loyal out of the both of them. Like, she really, really be going hard for JT. And so, if they fall out, which I know they will, I feel like they will later on, I feel like Miami is going to freaking go ghost. Like, I and I don't blame her because I know what it felt like. It just, it took me years to get over that heartbreak because I swore that person was my friend. And when I found out they weren't, I was traumatized. I was damaged. I was so hurt. Like, damn. 
bitch, you was my bitch. You, I thought you was my fucking dog. Like, I really thought you loved me the whole time. You loved me only when, only when convenient for you. As long as I'm not doing better than you, as long as I'm doing what you say, you love me. But if I elevate or if I'm my own person, you don't like me. You don't fuck with me, which means you don't love me. It's just a friendship of convenience. And somebody had put on my on YouTube, Carisha and Young Miami never was really friends. Now I'm seeing it because it's like, look at how JT moving. And people thought I was tripping when I said JT fake as hell for that queen mix. Because I'm a loyal person. I, I know true friendship. They don't have true friendship because look at how she's moving, JT. So it's really sad. It's really, really sad. And um, I believe that the city girls... Next year by next year, I don't think they're going to make it. Mm -mm. I don't think they're going to make it. The way JT is moving, JT is moving by herself. It's like JT is preparing for a solo career. JT is pre preparing for a solo career. I really feel like JT is really preparing for a solo career. And I think that now, from now, she's starting. Like she's already separating herself. Okay, Nicki Minaj, she's working with her. Then she's doing an interview with Nicki Minaj, right? And so she's basically competing with Carisha. Like, people be in your head in the industry to try to divide you against your best friend, Nicki being one of them. And it's like, now, people probably in her ear, like, go solo. And a lot of people used to tell JT, go solo, go solo. You, you better than Carisha rapping wise, go solo. So I feel like Young Miami, honestly, I feel like Young Miami is a city girl, but I feel like JT, I think she's preparing to go solo. I think JT wants to be the star. I think JT wants to be, wants this all for herself. And that's sad because we didn't see it like that. You never expect your friend to do, your friend to do you like that. I already see the signs. She's envious of Carisha and I feel like she's going to go solo. But what JT don't know is that if she goes solo, and Miami goes solo, Miami's going to go up. Miami's going to go up. Baby, if she didn't go platinum with you, Miami's going to go platinum then solo. Okay, so if if JT were to ever disband and break Carisha heart, like we're not cool, I'm solo, JT would be copper. She would go aluminum foil. She'll be like spilled milk. Her album would go aisle. Aisle number three is what her album would go. Like nobody would buy it. But everybody would support Carisha, including me. And I do come down on um Carisha by being delusional over Diddy because she is. But if JT did Carisha, like, but one thing about Carisha, she never switched up on JT. So if JT were to switch up on Carisha and call herself going solo, I'm buying Carisha's album because I don't fuck with that. That shit, I went through that um shit with my old friend, my ex friend, and I just now really like got over it. Like, okay, whatever, the past is the past, you know, let it go. The hurt, you know, the trauma, the resentment, the pain, let it go. You know what I mean? Like, I would definitely support Young Miami if she feel like she better and feel like, because you got Nicki Minaj, think about it. Nicki Minaj, I'm pretty, I think that. This is not confirmed, but I feel like seeing the type of female Nicki Minaj is, I feel like Nicki Minaj wants, if she's a divide and conquer type of female. So it's like the City Girls is a group. They're very powerful together, right? I feel like Nicki Minaj is the type of person that would tell JT, you could rap better. And JT's weak-minded. You could rap better. You have a better future. You are the talented rapper. She's chasing around Diddy. You need to take care of yourself. You can go solo. You can actually go solo. Now, now, what would that do for Nicki Minaj if JT and Carisha were to break up? Well, that's competition knocked out the way. The City Girls is no longer around. So that unit they have, that popularity, um, the, the their powerful unit, you know, the their powerful unity as the City Girls, that's done. So she's gonna be like, okay, that's over with. And now JT on her own and Young Miami's on her own. They're not guaranteed success solo. So I just knocked out a whole bunch of competition. Like JT may not be successful solo and Young Miami may not be successful solo because they're a force together. But by themselves, we don't know how they're going to do. So it's like a divide. It's the typical divide and conquer method that Nicki Minaj is doing. And I definitely feel like JT hanging around Nicki Minaj, she's going to fuck around and say, fuck Carisha by next year. I'm going solo. JT already said on a live, she was like, I'm going to be putting out um, music for my fans. I thought y'all was the City Girls, though. 
I thought y'all was the city girls, though. So your fans? Carisha don't talk like that. Carisha has done records with other people solo. How you do records with people solo, that's fine. But y'all still a, a group. But for you to basically say you're going to put out music for my fans, all because you see Carisha doing her thing, as she should, but she's still a city girl, your envy, you want to be, oh my, like it's going to be me and I'm going to do it for my fans. Basically, she's already separating herself. Like I'm, I'm JT, but baby, nobody's going to support you. I can tell I'm not switch up and watch what happened and watch you fucking go back to the projects. You're going to need Uzi real bad then. Cause if she switch up on Miami, I'm telling you, Miami's going to go up. I don't give a fuck who think Miami can't rap. Miami can rap. Okay. Miami's not a stupid girl. Miami is definitely a catchy lyricist. She definitely can rap. Miami is likable. Miami. If you notice. Miami's catchphrases is what makes the city girls flute out. Um, her verses, Miami's verses is what people be like really cat like really be on and, and it's catchy. You know, I'll never snitch on your daddy. I'll hold a brick for you, daddy. Smash on the like laughing bitch, I'm perfect. I love that song. Like Carisha's verses are memorable. Only time JT came through with a memorable verse was when she was on set somewhere, your money bag. But before that, Carisha is the girl that makes the verses that you remember. The, the, the verses that you be like, oh, she did that. And you and you sing it and you scream it. Her verses are memorable. So Carisha will definitely be successful. So I definitely think JT is preparing for a solo career. I think that she's envious. I think that Nicki Minaj is going to help her to remove herself from Carisha because Nicki don't fuck with Young Miami. And, um, you know, she's going to definitely, I think, try to disband and divide the two. And the friendship and the music, once that's ruined, it's like no more city girls. And then it's going to be like they're going against each other. But if they do that, just know Miami for the win. Miami got Diddy. Miami got a show. Miami got the public, uh, um, the public's, uh, uh, the, the public love Miami. They don't like JT. Miami's going to be the one that, that goes up while JT suffers and goes down. Watch. JT is her own worst enemy. JT is the stereotypical self-sabotaging bitch. Like, she's the bitch that basically has been through so much in life. She cannot let that trauma go, and she destroys her damn self. She does, She is her own worst enemy. You can't be that beautiful and that talented and do this to yourself. You're de She's self-destructing. She's her own worst enemy. And I'm out, y'all. And for everybody, by the way, for everybody, you know, um... All the people, the barbs that be hating. Oh, Cardi got 11 faces, sweetheart. Nicki Minaj got 11 stomachs. This is basically what Nicki Minaj looked like live. We all basically saw live what she was doing at Powerhouse. How you go from this to this? Because cause, cause I want to know what editing, because this is not basic Photoshop, to eliminate 13 guts, you got to have some type of supernatural system that Jesus the Nazarene licks or put his foot on and Holy Spirit enters into it to snatch this waist up because there's no she don't look like this in real life she has photoshopped like a motherfucker and this is inaccurate this is the utter lie this is what she really looked like and then you come on the magazine shortly after and look like this Baby, you got 11 stomachs and oh, Cardi got 11 faces, bitch. You're on your 12th stomach. You're on your 11th stomach. And I'm going to need you to stop lying to these people because you don't look like that in real life. You're not snatched up like that. Okay. This is finesse. This is exactly what cat. If catfish was a person, it would be Nicki Minaj. Okay. You cannot have all these stomachs, all these thighs. You look like a whale. You literally look like the obese little mermaid. All these little colors on you. You look like, like a real big ass obese mermaid. Okay. Ariel was very snatched and slim and petite. You look like the obese version. Okay. Looking like a fruity pebble. Colorful as fuck. Fat as fuck. And then you have the nerve to come on the magazine and try to lie to my eyes. Trying to make me feel like I got cataracts. God forbid. Bitch, I know what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a lie. I'm looking at photo edit. I'm looking at Photoshop. I'm looking at InShot. I'm looking at you go onto the app, your app store, and you 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 type in um 
editing and uh, uh what is it editing photos editing videos they edited the the freak out of this um picture and it's like yo this is not this is cardi's waist this is not her waist shorty got 12 whole thanksgiving turkeys in her belly right now and she's i i i want her to shit them all out because she needs a laxative she needs to get all of that out this is water this is this is this looks like high blood pressure. You you give me very much sodium. Lots of salt causes high blood pressure. I when I look at her, I think of high blood pressure. I think of salt. I think of heart disease. I think of the diabetes. I think of all types of diseases because obesity is definitely a cause for these things. You are why do you look like this? And then you have the nerve to come on cam on camera and try to look like this. Well, shout out to the person that literally surgically removed via editing her 11 stomachs. Shout out to y'all. Y'all did y'all big one. But just know that we all know she fat and this is a lie. Okay? I thought catfish was over, but apparently people are still trying to finesse. But you can't finesse me because I know what you look like for real, for real. We all know. We all saw your fat ass rolling around like a bo- like a basketball on Powerhouse Rolling on, the gl- rolling on the ground, and I'm trying to figure out, well, how did this bitch get up? I think with assistance, I think they lifted her up by her motherfucking hand. Like, here, here, bitch, here's your wheelchair and your cane and your dentures. You fell. They probably thought it was a slip and fall accident. No, her ass lays on the ground and wants to roll around trying to be sexy. When she knows she's way past sexy, she knows she's in her golden girl bingo years. She want to act like she's a sexy twerk girl like Cardi B, who's like three decades younger than her. Baby, you are bingo. You're supposed to be putting your hand up and you're supposed to be like, bingo. You're supposed to be asking the the nurse for your medication for the afternoon. You're supposed to be out there begging for jello in a nursing home. You should not be on the ground rolling around like a hula hoop, like a ball. Okay? Shaped like a fucking ball. Okay? But anyway, y'all, I'll catch y'all later.